My name is Diana Eisman with Eisman Law Firm in Los Angeles, California. I'm a criminal defense attorney and a former prosecutor. Today we're going to be watching clips of various classic movies and looking into whether or not the characters that we know and love were actually committing various forms of sexual assault. I'd like to think you're uh, not in all of this uh, caper. Skip it. I'm not interested. Let's go. What would it take for you to see things my way? A lot more than you've got. How do you know? I don't want to know. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned man his last request? You've asked for this. Let's start with the first one, shall we? Battery throws her across the room into a pile of hay. She tries several times to move her face so that he can't kiss her, and he does anyway. So that's sexual battery. In addition to the battery charge, he could be looking at potential lifetime sex offender registration because sexual battery, even though it is a misdemeanor, is still a registrable offense. Now we're gonna watch a scene from Revenge of the Nerds. Hi, Betty. A nerd. I'm not kissing a nerd. You have to. I paid my money. Kiss this, nerd. I want to do it. All this kissing's made me horny. God, Betty, you're like a goat. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Changed your mind. Take off your mask. Oh, that was wonderful. He did things to me you've never done before. <gasps> You're that nerd. Yeah. Oh, God, you were wonderful. Thanks. Okay, so that was awful um, and disturbing to watch because this young lady was raped. The law protects victims from having sex with someone who is pretending to be someone else. In other words, if she thought she was having sex with her boyfriend and this guy comes in wearing a mask, she even asks him. She says, Changed your mind. He says, yes. They're now gonna have this consensual sex, except it isn't consensual sex, it's clearly rape. <laughs> Are all nerds as good as you? Yes. And I think the thing that really kind of irritates me is that immediately afterwards when he reveals his identity, she's so okay with it. It's totally fine that she was conned into having sex with this complete stranger under false pretenses. Under most circumstances, a victim like this would go and report it as a rape. They fucking forgot my birthday. The next clip we're gonna watch is from 16 Candles, a classic John Hughes coming of age story. I loved, loved, loved John Hughes movies. They were the voice of a generation. It's really stupid, he doesn't even know I exist. He asked me about you. Did not. I'll go for it. You're the best. The thing is, I made a bet with my friends. I bet them that I'd do it with you. But this is before I knew you as a person. I can get proof without actually getting physical. How? Can I borrow your underpants for 10 minutes? I think it's time to blow this thing off and go to your house. Jakey, if you stop loving me. Leave me alone. You guys, I'm serious. Come on, I need help. I can get a piece of ass anytime I want. Shit, I got Carolyn in the bedroom right now, passed out cold. Could violate her 10 different ways if I wanted to. That's disgusting, and it's rape if he did actually go in and do that. Make a deal with you. Let me keep these. I'll let you take Carolyn home. But you gotta make sure she gets home. You can't leave her in some parking lot somewhere. Jake, I'm only a freshman. So? She's so blitz, she won't know the difference. Who's he? That's me. Oh. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Wait, hold on. How's this look? Oh, Victor! Cheers! What happened? I'll uh, tell you where you are. You'll tell me who you are. Did we, uh... Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, did I did I enjoy it? Did you? You know, I have 
have this weird feeling I did. I'm really sorry about getting you mixed up with that guy. Oh, it's okay. I'm really sorry about last night. The party. Oh, come on. Make no qualms about it. She was a rape victim. And it was all orchestrated by someone that she trusted, her boyfriend. More than 60% of sexual assault cases go unreported. So I don't know what she would do, but hopefully she would go to the police and she would make a report. And that investigation would probably uncover the fact that this rapist took her in a car while he was drinking. So there's plenty of underage drunk driving happening here too. She was also violated by many witnesses. That's something that would play out really unfavorably for the rapist in the courtroom today. So the next one we're gonna watch is Wedding Crashers, which is a movie that I actually laughed out loud almost from beginning to end when I saw it in the theater. What the f is going on? Baby, I started thinking about what you said before, and I think the problem is I am not being adventurous enough for you. Gloria, I'm pretty sure that is not what I've been saying to you. Baby, I'm gonna make all your fantasies come true. But this is not a fantasy. <laughs> I love you. Men can be victims of sexual assault too. And in this circumstance, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. They don't make it clear what happens next. It cuts to the next scene pretty quickly, but you're supposed to understand that they go on to have some sort of sexual adventure against his will, seemingly. So that is a crime. Uh, depending on whether or not there was intercourse, uh, that would determine what kind of crime it was. But at the very least, it is false imprisonment. Sexual assault, definitely. I just had my tits done. You like them? Those seem like lovely tits. William doesn't give a shit about my tits. Well, darn him. But Mrs. Cleary, oh, this is pretty sudden. You've been playing cat and mouse with me ever since you came here. Mrs. Cleary, I don't... Call me cat. Okay, cat. Call me kitty cat. <laughs> okay, kitty cat. This feels borderline inappropriate. It... Feel them. What? I said feel them. Mrs. Cleary. Kitty cat. I'm sorry, kitty cat. Are you out of your mind? I'm not letting you out of this room until you feel them. So I think the thing that's really important to note here is that there is a power dynamic. She is in a position of power. It is her home. He wants to make a good impression. And she's put him in a position where if he gets up and walks out, he could be insulting her. And it might make him feel like the easier thing to do would just be to acquiesce and do what she's asking him to do, as opposed to make a big scene and leave her hanging. It's, it's probably not gonna change the legality of it. I still don't see a prosecutor filing charges based on this conduct. I could potentially see a civil case coming out of this because it is some form of harassment, but it's unlikely that this would bring criminal charges. It's already difficult to prove allegations of sexual assault when there is a woman victim. And in circumstances when the victim is a male, um, it makes it even more challenging, especially where the perpetrator is a female. The next clip is from Twilight. Forks is growing on me. <gasps> Could a guy have anything to do with that? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you do it. Tell me everything. What is your job? Indy? I bet he's smart. Is he smart? Uh, Mama, I, can, can I talk to you later? Come on, we gotta talk boys. Are you being safe? <laughs> How did you get in here? The window. Do you do that a lot? Um, just the past couple of months. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, I like watching you sleep. It's, um... It's kind of fascinating to me. Um... I just want to try one thing. You stay very still. Oh my god.
Don't know. In cases that I've come across where a guy thinks he's being romantic, uh, but the girl doesn't realize that's what he's doing, we call that stalking. And there's nothing romantic about it. You can't just go into a girl's house and sneak into her room to watch her sleep over the last couple of months. No, that's illegal. Just the fact that she was present in the house when he trespassed, it's, it's an aggravated misdemeanor. It's called an aggravated trespass. Unless he had the intent to do some sort of felonious act inside the house, commit a felony inside the house, then it would be a residential burglary and the penalty would be state prison and a strike. What's important to note in these films is that there are no consequences for the perpetrator's actions. In fact, they don't even really see it as something that is wrong or illegal. This is just a subplot of the film. And that's changing. That's something that I'm hopeful going forward in films, filmmakers are more careful about what kind of messages they're sending to young girls and young boys about what is appropriate behavior. The biggest thing about the Me Too movement is that it's bringing forth a lot of consequences for actions that previously probably would not have even been reported. And really what we want is for the media in films to reflect that, to not glorify these actions that unfortunately victimize a lot of women and men across the country.